Hey, greetings. This is Fred in Alaska. Thanks for joining me today. A uh, little stuffed up. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to share with you today, um, I'm still working on the video from Doug, um, the pilot. Uh, the reason being is there's some some things that uh, me and him have been in discussions about on what he wants left in or not not shared because of uh, potential doxing or whatever. So, And, and I apologize for that. Uh, what I wanted to share with you today uh, comes from Stephen. Now, Stephen, avid hunter, um, been all over the place up here, you know, hunting here and there. And he happened to uh, one of his buddies, was a pilot, and offered to take him up. And, you know, hey, I'm going to the Brooks Range. If you want to, you know, come hang out. Excuse me, my, my windows are down and my neighbors are making noise but anyway made the invitation hey you know we're gonna be out there a couple weeks so if you want to go out towards the brooks range you know at this hunting camp you're, you're more than welcome to join us you know i won't charge you you know that type of thing um you know come as you are bring your stuff bring your own stuff and you know we'll be fine or whatever well steven agrees and he gets his wall tent a uh, little wood stove with it uh, and you know he hops along for the ride now this was the approximately uh three years ago now and so they get out there to this remote hunting area now up in the brooks range is this rolling hills tundra not i mean very sparse with the trees right especially in this general area where they were well he happened to find a little bunch of little dwarf trees as i call them you know they're stunted by alkaline because of the marsh and stuff but he found this little group of trees where he set up his little wall tent and his pilot buddy when he was in camp would crash there as well so one morning uh about three days into this proposed two weeks uh four four days in i apologize so he's four days in and he wakes up to obvious sounds of a bull moose grunting right outside so he's like oh score so he opens up the tent and he's got his rifle he steps outside and directly in front of him is these little dwarf trees and stuff just a small little kind of half circle that he was in and there's this bull moose too small it wasn't legal but it was a bull moose laid down about 10 feet in front of this door the bull moose looks back at him unconcerned and just went back to his focusing directly away from so in line of sight where Stephen was standing the moose is directly in front of him and the moose is looking directly away right so I mean they're they're in line and so he's standing he's like what the hell you know he's looking and it's obviously not a legal bull and so he's like well crap now I gotta worry about this bull it's rut you know so this the potential is bad right and he doesn't want to shoot it for any reason unless it's, you know, legal. And so he, as he's standing there pondering this, the moose stands up. And immediately he, he steps back inside the tent. And he's watching through the flap, you know. He doesn't want to have to shoot it, but he's worried it's going to turn and charge him because it's in the rut. Well, this moose starts walking directly away about five paces or so. And then hangs a hard left and takes off. Just, just making squalling making all sorts of noises runs off he's like what the hell so he steps back outside the flap and he's looking in the direction this moose took off well out of the corner of his eye from his right hand side this brown blur just takes off following after the moose right and brown blur he immediately thought grizzly bear so he changed his attention to that and he can't really make it out because of those little dwarf trees. So he trots on over into the open tundra and has kind of got these rolling hills, right? And it kind of goes up onto a rise from there. Stephen said when he got there and he raised his rifle, uh, at this point the moose was already, long, I mean, hauling. And this brown thing had stopped. And when he lifted his rifle and, and put a scope on it, it turned around and stood up, right? He said that his whole body immediately started shaking. This thing looked directly at him in his eyes. Uh, didn't have to search him out. Heard that plenty of times before. But uh, so as he's sitting there trying to figure out what the hell he's really looking at. Because he said it, it looked like a guy in a ghillie suit at first with this weird face paint on it. So he was studying it really good but had this really odd feeling. 
So as he's looking at it, this thing, boom, goes, takes off, runs from left to right, and disappears in the direction it had originally come from. So he's approximately 25 feet from his tent at this point. Everyone else, there was no one else in camp. The other people that were there were on their own mission. They were on their own program. They were gone somewhere. And so as he's sitting there, he's trying to figure out what the hell, you know, what, what am I going to do kind of thing. Stephen said uh, he went inside and, and felt very uneasy in his own skin. Didn't, didn't want to be there anymore. Didn't know how to go about sharing what had just happened because he said this thing's face uh looked like really dark tanned leather like beat up kind of old couch look real wrinkly uh the eyes were bright they were uh, a yellowish golden color very bright no whites very wide set jaw uh he said the hair was kind of hard to notice at first because this all happened in mere brief seconds But he did see that the hair almost blended in perfectly with the color of the skin, right? And so he said as he was Just kind of mentally assessing looking through the scope when this thing took back off He said it moves so fast that he could, he was swinging as fast as he could to try to keep up with it to You know get a look at this thing and he said it, it was just gone so he got a brief look at it, real real wide set jaw, big head on top of real wide shoulders, right? Uh, I asked how tall it was, and he said he had no clue because where where he was, there's these rolling hills, and it was over one of these rolling hills, so he had no true gauge of exactly how tall this thing was, right? And then when it took off running, it was on all fours when it when it booked out of there. So. Again, he sits there, he contemplates, he paces around camp, he's looking all over, and as he's doing so, the weather starts coming in. And so he's like, crap, crap. So as the weather's coming in, the clouds are basically coming to the ground, you know, like foggy, can't see nothing, socked in as we call it up here. So he's basically in socked in conditions. He doesn't know where the other hunters are. Because, again, they were on their own program. He was there on his program. They just asked, don't don't head southeast. We're going to be in the southeast area. You know, so he, you know, agreed with that. And that, you know, he's basically there alone. He said for the next three hours, he sat, he, uh, he had no, his camp chair accidentally caught fire. And so he had nowhere to sit. And there was no tree stumps for him to sit on because all the trees were little dwarf ones, you know. And so he drags his cot outside and he starts stoking the fire, you know, because it's a little chilly out and, you know, he starts tending to the fire pit. Now, inside the tent is plenty warm, but he, you know, he's a little, little weirded out and wants eyes to look around. You know, he didn't want to feel trapped inside the tent with this thing around. He said for about three hours he sat there. Uh, his cot was getting soaking wet from the drizzle, you know, just, gosh, I, if you haven't been in those conditions, you wouldn't understand but it's it's miserable I, I don't care if you got a fire or not it's just you, you're constantly wiping your face you know it, it's you're basically sitting in a cloud yeah you know a very moist cloud and it's just drizzly nonsense so as he's sitting there and he's doing his best to keep the fire going he hears coming from behind him to his left the direction the moose took off from this bull moose comes walking back and this bull moose is well aware, looking right at him, walks over just in, just past him and where he had everything set up, just right over between him and the little dwarf trees, curls around and, and lays down next to a tree. What, what, do you, what do you do with that? You know, it wasn't big enough for him to shoot. He had enough integrity. He wasn't just going to pop it and claim it charged him, you know, without it actually being so. And this thing gave no crap about him but was like trying to stay close to him so he, he he was just watching it and figured okay well earlier when this moose was paying attention to this thing i didn't know it but he was giving me early warning so i'm gonna pay attention to the moose and that'll be that so he sits there and he's sitting there and after a while uh, after that initial three hour period it, it continues and as he's sitting there he starts hearing noises from down towards the southeast where the other group of hunters went right and so he's like okay well i'm gonna leave this moose be i'm gonna go meet up with those guys 
because the direction these things ran was in that general direction, not exact, but that general direction. So I'm going to, you know, he was like, I'm going to go over and, and warn people. So, <coughs> excuse me. He does. He he starts hiking over. He's got his rifle. You know, he, he grabbed his little day pack, you know, and, and started walking towards these noises of these voices, right? And the closer he's getting to these voices, he's realizing that's not, something's off about this sound. Something's totally off about the sound. So now he's in very thick fog. The noises he's hearing is becoming very evident. They are not the people and the, the noises he was expecting, because at first he w it was just murmuring in the distance, you know. So there he is. He's standing out on the tundra, socked in conditions, and he's hearing this noise. Uh, when I asked him what was the noise like, he said it was the Sierra sounds were the closest thing he could find that sounded similar. So this poor guy standing in thick fog and he's hearing basically Sierra sounds around him. And he can't see further than 25 feet. And it, what he could see past that was just so obscured by the fog and basically the cloud being on the ground, he couldn't see. So he's like, screw this. And he heads back over to where the tent is, right? So he comes back into his camp. That bull moose is now standing up and about 25 feet further away. The moose comes in a little closer, sees it's him turns around and starts looking back out so he sits down on his cot and he's sitting there going what the hell do i do uh, up until that point he had never dealt with bigfoot hairy man any of that stuff right but he had been around he had heard stories but he chalked it up to uh someone's just trying to scare me around the campfire type thing right so he sits down on the cot and he's contemplating well what i saw what i looked at through the scope was real as real as hell the, like no doubt that wasn't a man in a suit. No one moves like that, you know. So he's he's going through the process of elimination. And as he's doing so, he hears the the sound of something rubbing against a tree. And it sounded like fabric. You know, just like when you walk through the brush and it kind of rubs against your windbreaker. That kind of sound. Turns and looks. And he's not sure what he's seeing. Because it's just, just in his view but obscured by the fog and he sees this big white and yellow type of thing and it's rubbing against the tree it's kind of and then it dawned on him it's one of the other people's tents so something has a hold of this tent right over there and it's pulling it up against the tree basically right and so he he's like hey hey he starts yelling out because he doesn't want to get blamed for someone's damaged tent you know and you know so he thinks yell out so he yells out and takes a few steps in that direction and when he does all of a sudden everything goes dead quiet now up until that point he, he had the moose over here he was hearing sounds off in the distance still but nothing real close and then this tent thing happens so he's freaked out he gets over by the tent he's got his rifle up and he's looking he doesn't see anything nothing right and so he notices this particular tent didn't have a bottom it, it was the kind without a floor. You know what I mean? It was basically just a dome shell type of tent. And so he's kind of looking at it and he uses, he's holding the rifle and he uses his boot to lift up the edge of it. And as he does, on the opposite side, all of a sudden something just hits the inside of that thing and the whole tent is just basically taken off, going away from him real fast. He startled as shit, popped around in the air just because, I mean, you know, it all happened so quick. So he Pow! Fires around. Tent's gone. Just disappeared into the fog. And he's like, holy sh you know, holy crap. So he retreats back to his tent. He's inside now. He, he left the cot outside. He's in his tent. He's shivering. He's shaking. He is really starting to freak out. And as he's sitting there, way, 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 way off in the distance, he hears a gunshot barely audible but he he knows it was a gunshot so he's like okay maybe they're responding to my shot i didn't shoot three times so they should know it wasn't like a necessarily an emergency bang 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 you know type of thing and so he's sitting there for a while freaking out doesn't know what to do doesn't know what to tell the people you know like what the hell am i gonna say because he didn't see anything he went to lift it up with his boot and it takes off right like wh what do you do with that so 
he resigns himself to staying in his tent until people get there. You know what I mean? So he drags his cot back inside. That moose is still standing right over there. Uh, at a certain point, he said it, it laid back down, but it was always looking off into the fog in the direction that basically the tent took off in, right? He doesn't know what to do. Stephen said he he packed his stuff. He folded up his cot once or twice, unfolded it, laid it out, somewhere to sit. You know, I mean, he was just didn't know what to do with himself. Had all this all this energy, and he had to do something. So finally, he said, "Screw it! I'm gonna I'm gonna have to actively find these people. I need someone here." So as he's deciding he's gonna do that. He goes out the door of the tent and he hears actual human talking, not that far away. And one of the voices he recognized as uh, one of the main hunters of that other group. And he was kind of loud, like, what the hell happened to my tent? Right. So he goes over there. He does his best to explain everything that happened. The guy looked at him and said, why did you go through my tent? Stephen said, look, dude. I got a way more expensive tent. I'm not out here stealing. Here's what happened. The moose I'm telling you about is right over there. The guy goes with him, sees the bull moose. It was like, it, it gave more credence in the moment to what the guy was telling him, right? To what Stephen was telling this guy. So he goes, okay, well, if that's the case, you know, there's got to be signs of tracks or something around here. So Stephen wasn't looking for tracks. He didn't even think to. But where they had set up their tent was a, a little dirt spot worn into the tundra from where they had camped over the years and stuff, right? So it was kind of hard-packed dirt. Well, it was soft enough that there was tracks there. There was two tracks, one smaller, one bigger. And once they saw those, the, the guy was just like big-eyed. And they had uh, one of their kids with them. He was 17, but th that poor kid, uh, according to what Stephen said, he wasn't allowed to leave his dad's hip. Uh, they all went out as a group looking for more sign. Uh, that shell that was staked into the ground was staked on top of a tarp and everything was still there. It was just a little disheveled. So there was actually nothing missing. It was just the tent had been moved and all that kind of stuff. Right. So <coughs> Stephen said it was the hardest walk he ever had because he had been stressed out for hours I know that feeling where you're just uh, just adrenaline dumped and just uh, just tense. So he walks with them. They go back out, and uh, they're looking around for other sign. They get to a certain point, and the, and everything starts clearing up. The sun was breaking through the clouds. Basically, it's getting later in the day, uh, about mid afternoon or so at this point, and the sun starts breaking through. And they're all standing there, standing around talking. And a couple of the guys in the other hunting party were smoking a cigarette when the 17-year-old kid goes right over there, right over there. Everyone turns and looks, and they see this big-ass silhouette of it looked like a very large man. When they all focus their energy in that direction, Stephen said that thing let out a weird howl and took off running to their left. Just gone. And it just gone. Just took off. Everyone immediately was like, let's get back to camp. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they get back to camp and they basically wait for Stephen's buddy, the pilot, to come back from whatever he was doing. And of course, he couldn't land because every, everywhere was socked in. So it was like a day and a half later, he was able to come in and land. Everyone was ready. Uh, Stephen waited while they got the other party out of there. And then his friend came back as quickly as he could, got there super late, and basically they took off the next morning. Um, he he talked to the people since. Uh, he explained to them, hey, I'm going to reach out to this guy, Fred, check him out. I'm going to share what I saw. And they were like, you do you. You know, they wanted no part of, of sharing what portion they saw, right? Um, and according to what Stephen said, the whole time, you know, for the day and a half, whatever, before his buddy got there and all that stuff, that moose stayed within eye shot of everyone there. Uh, would not leave camp. And, I mean, at, he said at one point it came so close to the group they contemplated shooting it. 
because it was so close, but it wasn't doing, it wasn't showing any aggression for being in the rut. It was just like a docile animal, like, I'll hang out with you guys, you know, was kind of the vibe they were getting. So, you know, they ended up not shooting it. Uh, I want to thank Steven for sharing with me um, and being patient. Like I always say, man, I have a process to do these things and stuff. And I, I appreciate Steven taking the time, getting back a hold of me and all that stuff. Uh, let's see, was there something else? Not, nothing I could think of offhand. Um, other than I'm, I'm trying my best to get that other video up, uh, but you know there's certain things with people uh, that could easily dox them, and something Doug doesn't want to do is dox people. And so anyway, you, you'll 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 understand once I release that video. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me, and we'll catch you on the next one.